Hello and welcome. You are watching UATV News with me, Ksenia Buhai. Let's start with the latest developments, build up of Russian troops on the border with Ukraine and countering Kremlin information aggression. Those issues are on the agenda of the meeting between presidents of Ukraine, Poland and Lithuania in ivano frankivsk region. Volodymyr Zelensky, Andrzej Duda and Gitana Snowseda discuss improving the defense sector, opposing the launch of Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline and adhering to nuclear safety standards. The leader signed a joint declaration on the establishment of a new regional alliance. Among the priorities of the format are strengthening common security, Ukraine's integration into the EU and NATO, development of economic cooperation and joint counteraction to hybrid threats. One of the elements of the hybrid war is the escalation of temporarily uncontrolled territories and military build-up along the border with Ukraine. I have told in details about our peaceful initiatives in the frameworks of the trilateral contact group and the Normandy format. I stressed on our readiness to dialogue and attempts to organize a meeting on the Normandy 4. Given the complicated security situation, any support is vital for us. At present, our law enforcement structures are actively cooperating, and we also strengthen our trilateral cooperation to counter any disinformation. Cooperation in the sphere of shipbuilding, the Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine and the Minister of Defense of Denmark signed a memorandum on a joint project for the construction of multi-purpose vessels. Technologies and means are Danish, but the ships will be assembled at Ukrainian enterprises. The pilot project is the construction of a vessel hull for rescue operations in the Black Sea. Its first block is planned to be ready by the end of 2024. Ukraine is going to receive landing technologies related to the construction of multifunctional vessels. And now we are considering one project for the construction of an almost 80 meters long multifunctional vessel. We hope to receive technology first. Besides, the Export Credit Society of the Kingdom of Denmark is tentatively ready to provide appropriate financial assistance. The conflict in Donbass can be resolved through political and diplomatic means. However, in the event of threat to territorial integrity, Ukraine will not make any concessions. This was stated by Minister of Defense of Ukraine Oleksii Reznikov at a general briefing with the Minister of Defense of Denmark, Trina Bromson. According to him, the reintegration of certain areas of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions is possible in case that the security is guaranteed. If this is an ultimatum from the Kremlin that we should get another federal district or some kind of autonomy that they dream of, then this is impossible. 70% of Ukrainians agree to the return of the occupied territories on terms existing before 2014. This means that Ukraine is a unitary country and there can be no other option. If Russia decides to invade Ukraine, it will face serious consequences. This was stated by the Prime Minister of Finland, Sanna Marin, during a radio interview. It is about toughening economic sanctions by the European Union and the United States. According to Sanna Marin, it is the interest of the Russian Federation to relieve tension and act within the framework of previous agreements. This situation is serious and alarming, and we need to be prepared for various scenarios of the development of events. Obviously, Europe cannot agree with Russia's views on its spheres of influence. Therefore, we need to make it clear that if the Russian Federation continues to act aggressively towards Ukraine, this will have consequences. Sanna Marin, Prime Minister of Finland. The Dutch prosecution started announcing the indictment followed by the demand for a specific sentence for the four accused. In their closing arguments in the MH17 case, prosecutors are expected to list the facts of the criminal proceedings and explain the evidence against the four defendants. The first day begins with the familiarization, after which the investigation, the charges and the course of the trial will be discussed. Later, prosecutors will explain in the first part of the evidence chapter. This includes the use of phone numbers by the suspects, confirmation of wiretapped conversations, contacts and the delivery of a book anti-aircraft missile system. The indictment will be announced for three days.
To remind a passenger, Boeing 777 flew from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur and was down on July 17, 2014. All 283 passengers and 15 crew members died. The international investigation team concluded that the plane was shot down by the book anti-aircraft missile system. It belonged to the 53rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Brigade of the Air Defense of the Russian Armed Forces, which was stationed in Kursk. Former President of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko is suspected of treason. They stated in the State Bureau of Investigations that the case concerns a scheme on coal supplies from, from temporarily occupied territories and assistance to terrorist organizations LPR and DPR by a group of Ukrainian citizens. The agency called in Poroshenko for questioning on December 23rd. Another 150 Ukrainians who were forced to leave their homes in the occupied Crimea and Donbass will be able to get a preferential loan for housing at 3% per annum, a new draw for participation in affordable mortgages program among all who registered in the housing for internally displaced persons project was held. The program's budget is 25 million euros. 235 families have already been able to purchase housing on credit on favorable terms. The list of winners of the fifth selection will be published on the official website of the State Fund for the Promoting of Youth Housing. First of all, one has to submit a document confirming the status of an internally displaced person, documents confirming family ties, namely a certificate of marriage, birth of children. Then one has to order an income certificate for the past six months. It is not that difficult. Find an object and bring an extract from the Register of Rights and a technical passport for that object, as well as bring a preliminary sales contract with the seller. The project is very successful because the system works. This is our fifth random, and with each random it goes better and better. As of now, the fund has already received 9.5 million euros from one of the European banks, which means that we can plan the randoms for the next four months. The next one will be held in the first half of January, and then in February. Ukrainians have already spent 100 southern hryvnias, which they received under the e-support program. Basically, they bought books. This was stated by deputy head of the office of the president of Ukraine, Rostislav Shurma. He said it goes about the money partner banks have credited to special cards from their own funds. In the near future, those costs will be reimbursed to banks. An application for an e-support program can be made via the DIA application. Three and a half million Ukrainians have already registered in the program and issued special bank cards. This year, $290 million that we have allocated for the program will be enough. If there is such a dynamic which we see in the first days of the program, then certainly we will add funds to this program at the first review of the state budget. The government will allocate exactly the same amount of funds as the number of people registering for this program. Improving the quality of teaching mathematics and computer science in schools, up-to-date technologies in universities and government support for those who want to change their profession. The Minister of Digital Transformation of Ukraine shared plans for reforming IT education. The goal is to double the number of specialized specialists to 450,000 people by the year 2024. My colleagues found out how the ministry is going to solve the problem of staff shortages in the fastest growing market. 20,000 IT specialists graduate annually from Ukrainian universities. However, in order to cover the demand of the technology market and personnel, the number of graduates has to be two or three times more. There are large companies in Ukraine that offer from two to three thousand vacancies, and this suggests that there is indeed a shortage and the IT market is growing rapidly. Over the past two years, the ministry ensured increase in the number of budget-funded places in IT specialties in universities. But they are often unfilled. Rector of the Kyiv National University Volodymyr Buhrov says that the problem lies in the level of knowledge of applicants. 
There must be a certain level of knowledge. For example, a pass rate for software engineering and computer science at the Faculty of Computer Cybernetics is 195. That's why not everyone will do it. Good knowledge in mathematics is required to pass. Improving the quality of teaching mathematics and computer science in Ukrainian schools is one of the key tasks in the framework of the IT education reform. For this, teachers will undergo retraining and next year they will launch video courses in these subjects for school children. Even IT companies have started training teenagers, realizing that they will need employees in the future. The project was developed for 15-17 years old school graduates. It lasted 13 weeks. This is a social project. We do not expect those students work for us. However, in the future, in some five years, we hope them to join the market of IT specialists in Ukraine. IT companies say that many of their employees did not receive specialized higher education, but came from other areas. They are called switchers. Large international companies are ready to train those willing to work for them free of charge. These are programs that are available to the general public regardless of whether a person graduated from IT faculty or from any other. If there is a necessary basis, if this person passes the preliminary selection, we are ready to train him. According to the Minister of Digital Transformation, the state's support of informal IT education can give a quick result for the development of the market. Next year, they plan to launch a state program to co-finance the payment of such training. We see that it is possible to help pay 15% to people who want to change professions or want to get an IT specialty. We will launch it next year. We already have a budget for it. In addition, they want to exempt ID courses from value-added tax. The corresponding bill will be submitted to the Verkhovna Rada early next year. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Yulia Kruchkova, UATV News. 36 southern Ukrainians were vaccinated against COVID-19 over the past day. The first dose was administered to more than 11 southern people. Almost 25,000 got fully immunized. Also on the eve, less than three southern new cases of infection in Ukraine were registered. The situation with coronavirus in the country is better than in the European countries, the Minister of Health notes. Only two out of 25 regions of Ukraine do not fulfill the conditions for getting out of the red quarantine zone. These are the Volyn and Zaporizhia regions. The other 23 regions have either already been removed from the red zone or will be withdrawn in the coming days by the decision of the Commission on Emergencies. Snow falls, ice and cold weather was up to minus 18 degrees Celsius. Forecasters warn the weather is going to worsen in Ukraine. Strong night frosts will come starting Wednesday, but they will not last long until the end of the week. The state emergency service advises to postpone trips to the Carpathian Mountains. Heavy snow falls and avalanches are expected there as well. There is a new pet in the Odessa Zoo. Employees of the environmental inspection found a black swan in the Black Sea. The bird was tired and swam several kilometers away from the shore. The locals fed it for several days and then sent the bird to the zoo. An information ring was found on the swan's pool. But since the market was made according to foreign standards, they have not yet been able to find out where it fled from. Now it was settled with a pair of the same Australian black swans and, the, and in the spring the zoo will try to find a mate for him. Obviously, this bird lived somewhere in some kind of farm and has somehow appeared on a reservoir in Rani. It is healthy, it feels well, it is clear that the bird was fed correctly. It's a hot season at the factory of New Year and Christmas decorations. In the village of Kovsharivka near Kharkiv, only few enterprises produce glass Christmas decorations in Ukraine. And each of them keeps in secret their production features and traditions in design. However, the craftsmen in Kovsharivka decided to tell a bit to our correspondents. See the story. Milia Prokhorenkova is a glass blower with 40 years of experience. The look of a decoration fully depends on the woman's skills. She determines the size of the toy and the force of exhale by eye. She says that this stage is the most difficult and dangerous. 
чтобы изготовить вот такой большой шар. To make such a large ball, we need a white tube because the glass melts more, and I need to take a deeper breath to blow it out. During a shift, an experienced glass blower blows up to 200 large balls. Even the diameter is smaller than 300. Later, they are silvered, varnished, and dried. And if there is need to decorate it at once, then a drawing is applied with a stencil on a special machine. The plates are glued, the suitable paint is poured into the trays, it's all assembled like a puzzle and is kind of printed on a ball. The symbol of the coming year, a striped tiger cub in 3D, is made by Olena Khodakovska. She says such balls are always in demand. Not only rich people, but also those who will not try to buy something expensive are going to buy it, because this is a symbol of the year. The toy is beautiful, the ball is beautiful, there are no such toys anywhere. At the final stage, the artists paint the decorations by hand. For 20 years of work, Lyudmila Pisarenko has decorated thousands of balls. We want the year to be good and kind, we try to put our positive energy in our work. The factory has also organized master classes for kids for them to try to decorate the ready toy themselves. I'm drawing a snowman on this bulb. I think I'll then add the year 2022 if some space remains. The work at the Christmas decorations factory never stops. We are working for the year ahead. You see, the year 2023 is coming next. It will be a year of the rabbit year. We think about this rabbit and have already prepared some sketches. This factory of Christmas and New Year decorations is known not only in Ukraine. Most of its products decorate Christmas trees in France, Germany, Israel and China. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Natalia Belokudra, UATV News. That was our final story. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter pages. Stay healthy and take care of yourselves.